of God's word. Okay, our scriptorial reading on tonight is going to come from Psalms 23. And it reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the uh, valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Uh, uh, for the Lord our God is with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with all. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, may God add a blessing to the reading of his divine word. You may be seated. Help us sing that. Walk in the light.
that is certainly good news uh, that the Lord is blessing me right now because he's a right now God. And thank God for the blessings that he gives us right now. Amen, amen. At this time, our brothers will come to receive of us a revival offering on tonight. Amen, 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 amen. Worship is a part, giving is a part of worship. Amen, amen. It is a major part of worship, giving unto God. He has certainly given so much to us. Uh, since he's given much to us, uh, we do want to give back to him. And, uh, Pilgrim Rest want to say uh, God bless you uh, for your giving. I don't know what each individual gives in this church because that's, that's not my business. That's between you and God. Uh, but, but, but collectively, uh, the Lord is blessing you and, and, and God is continuing to put his good hand on you because of your liberality in giving. And uh, I know some pastors in the area or wherever, uh, they may check the score every Sunday to see who gave and who didn't give think that's crazy uh, because you can start showing partialities to somebody who's giving much and then you can uh, may not care about anybody who can't give any and so uh, what you give is between you and God but when but but when you don't give you're cutting off your nose despite your face uh, because God is blessing you with all that he does and when you prioritize him uh, he will certainly see to it that your needs are met. And so I want to thank you, uh, as a Pastor, for your liberality in giving unto the Lord, which shows me that you, priori you prioritize God. And when you prioritize God, I tell you, you can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. And so we praise God for your liberality. And we want to encourage you to continue to keep get, putting God first, and he will bless you. We certainly do have uh, online giving. Uh, go to pilgrimrest.net can give there, and we do have a text to give. You can text the word uh, G-I-V-E to 713-804-6820. That's the word G-I-V-E to 713-804-6820. As always, we thank you for the gifts that you have given and will give, ma'ams and sirs. Certainly the Lord will render unto you a recompense according to the works of your hands. Let's pray. God, how we thank you for this opportunity to give right now. We praise and honor your name. We thank you and we bless you right now. Uh, ask for God that you will honor our gifts that we are giving to you. We give with open mind, open hearts, and open hands. Bless us now, God, as we give, oh God, not only for your kingdom, but to bless people even outside of these walls. Bless those who don't even have anything to give. Uh, minister to their needs in a special way. As always, during our offertory prayer, we want to pray for our enemies right now. There is, We want to pray for your enemies, oh God, who want to see your church fail, oh God, who, who are just enemies of you. Ask you, oh God, that you would bless our enemies right now, those who are setting traps for us right now, those who mean us no good, those who are backstabbing us in our back right now, oh God. God, those who hate us with a cause and without a cause, God. We ask you right now that you would bless them, oh God. If they need food, bless them with food. If they need transportation, bless them with transportation. If they need water, bless them with water. And matter of fact, God, help us to be instruments in blessing them. For your word says to love our enemies and do good to those who despitefully use us. And we do it because we take you at your word and we love you. Now bless us as we give. In the strong and able name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Also, as, and we'll ask at this time, as Pastor Holloway, if he would come this way, please, sir. Amen. Amen.
Pastor Russell here. Amen. Hey, come, come, come on up, Pastor, if you want. You're good. All right. Amen. Amen. Good friend, brother of mine. God bless you, Pastor. It gives me honor and a great privilege now to introduce uh, this great man of God. him, well with his voice that he is, around 2003 and 2002, uh, he would come on uh, 1360 uh, here in Houston when he pastored the Antioch Baptist Church. Uh, we were talking in the car, it was, he would come on first, uh, then uh, Pastor Anderson and then Pastor J.C. Carrington. After those three, whatever them other fellas start saying, you couldn't make sense of it. <laughs> uh, but uh, this pastor has been a, a blessing to me, and I've admired him from afar. And uh, the Lord laid it on my heart to reach out to him and ask that he would come uh, this way uh, to the Pilgrim Rest pulpit to proclaim to us the word of God. God has gifted him as few men in the word of God. He is humble, and the Lord uses him always in a great way. I thank God for his stick-to-itiveness to the gospel in a day and a time when a lot of our senior pastor preachers are going way to the left to please jokers around my crowd. Uh, he's standing boldly for the word of God. Uh, he is the president of of the Wolverine, uh, of the Wolverine um, right there, you're right, State Convention, I give you the whole, the Wolverine State Missionary Baptist Convention of Michigan, amen. And he is also the proud pastor of the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. And we thank God uh, that he's here on tonight to share from us the riches of the word of God. So I ask that you will stand to your feet. As we present our preacher for tonight, uh, Pastor Nathan Johnson, uh, pastor of the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Holy Spirit will say through Pastor Johnson to us tonight. Pastor Johnson. to be here. I am so honored by <clears throat> the Lord uh, working through Pastor Wilkins to extend to me this undeserved privilege to be in this holy place uh, with this pastor and the people of the Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. I want you to know I'm honored to be here. Uh, Pastor, I, I'm going to ask if the air uh, for me would, amen, that would, uh, it may not make the preaching better, but it'll help keep me from working too hard, amen. To Pastor Thomas of the St. John Baptist Church on Gray, uh, he reminded me of when he first encountered me and uh, my brother, uh, and I call him my brother, he's married to my sister, Pastor Craig Holloway, uh, pastor of the Market Street, Cathedral of Faith at Market Street in Galveston, Texas. Now I need to say this, that um, the way that these brothers, all of them are close to the same age, they reminisce, it kind of makes me feel old. <laughs> and, uh, um, uh, the Lord has been kind to me and uh, they have blessed me already. And uh, Pilgrim Rest, you're blessed with a wonderful man of God. Let me thank God for this singing aggregation. Um, let me thank 
God for them and the ushers who are serving, deacons, officers, trustees, members, friends, everybody. Uh, amen. It's just good to be here. Brother Musician, um, E flat, E flat major. Um, are you familiar with even me? Lord, I hear a showers of blessings. The church say yes, say yes, say yes, oh yes, yes, 
Father, we come now thanking you for this privilege. And we ask, oh God, that you would grant us the privilege to hear your voice tonight. For in this world, this noisy world, we need your voice to cut through the noise. For we know that there is no voice like thine that peace can afford. Now, Lord, you've given me the privilege to stand tonight, and I need you to focus my mind, frame my thoughts, and fix my words so that what happens in these moments, first and foremost, would be pleasing to you. And then I pray that you would see fit to use these words for the edification of all who would hear. Now, Lord, we thank you for uh, the manifestation of your presence already. But I ask that you would cover me afresh with your grace and mercy so that none of my shortcomings, deficiencies, faults, failures, or impediments would get in the way of what you desire to do here tonight. Touch me now for your glory. In the name of Jesus, the Christ we pray. Amen. if at all possible, amen. Uh, that's hitting me, yeah, please. Um, as I thought about, as I prayed about um, tonight, the Lord laid a, a story a bit of narrative uh, from the word. Found in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 8, reading from verse 22 through 25 of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. It reads, One day he and his disciples got into a boat and he told them, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they set out. And as they were sailing, he fell asleep. Then a fierce windstorm came down on the lake, and they were being swamped and were in danger. They came and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we're going to die. Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. So they ceased, and there was calm. He said unto them, Where is your faith? They were fearful and amazed, asking one another, Who can this be? He commands even the winds and the waves, and they obey him. Thus reads the word of the Lord. Turn to your neighbor, if you don't mind, and, and say, neighbor, the preacher has a question. And here it is. Where is your faith? You may be seated. Where is your faith? Now, 
the object of your faith determines your confidence. Your level of peace is determined by what you have faith in. The level of your anxiousness, anxiety, is directly related to what you trust. And there's a question tonight that you might want to consider answering. Where is your faith? Somebody right now is having an unwanted love affair with anxiety. You're sitting in here, you You've got your church makeup on and your church clothes on, but you are worshiping, but yet worried. You are praising, but yet with panic. This is an interesting question because it's a question that doesn't come from society. This is not even a self-prompted question. This is a question from the Savior. And, 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 and since it's a question from the Savior, we might not want to ignore it. You know, some of us, some of us have a certain attitude when folk ask us certain questions, we will either ignore it or we'll tell them it's not any of, come on, help me, of your business. But since this is a question from Jesus, y'all do know who Jesus is, don't you? <clears throat> since this is a question from Jesus, you might want to give an answer. Oh, wait a minute. Some of you are looking at me funny. I'm talking about this is a question from the one who woke you up this morning, the one who started you on your way, the one who protected you at that intersection. Y'all ain't hearing me. The, 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 the one that kept you from dying from the poisonous food you ate. Am I talking to anybody here? The one that kept you enclosed in your right mind and kept the room. You might want to answer the question. This question Jesus asked to his disciples. He asked this question to his disciples, those who were followers of him, those who claimed to be committed to him, people like us who claim to be washed in the blood of the lamb and whose name is written in the lamb's book of life, those who have been brought from darkness to light, from death to life. I wish I had somebody here. Those of us who feel, who are, who are filled with the Holy Spirit, he's asking the question, where is your faith? But when I look at this and forgive my simple way of trying to keep it together in, in my head, I see, I see four things in the text. I see, I see, number one, the probing question. Number two, I see a proving situation. Number three, I see a powerful salvation. And then number four, I see a pondering reflection. Stay with me now. I see, I see a probing question. It's a probing question. It's a probing, probing question. It's better, it's more, more probing than any question somebody may have asked you today. Where is your faith? Now, I don't need to remind you that in order for preaching to be something for you, you've got to meet the preacher halfway. And, and, and I just need you to say amen, even if you're saying it for the person next to you. Because they might not know when to say amen. And, 
and, and let me let me give you just a, a little insight. I I have a strange uh, psychological idiosyncrasy that is when folk don't talk back to me, I talk to myself. So if I say amen lights and walls, it means you missed an opportunity to say amen. Help me somebody. This probing question, where is your faith? In what have you placed your faith? And see, the, the, the answer to that question is that your faith is in whatever uh, you, you feel you can't live without. Some people's faith is in people and some people's faith is in their possessions. Some people's faith is in the place. Some people's place of faith is, is in uh, uh, their own uh, profession and some their perception. Let me back up. Some people's faith is in people. They are, they are all right as long as they know who is with them. Y'all don't know anybody like that, don't you? They, 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 are, they are cool, calm, and collected if they got the right crowd with them. Am I talking to anybody here? They rely on who's running with them. So much so that some folk like that come to church. They don't come to Pilgrim Rest, but they come to church, and it can be a crowd like this. And because their folk ain't here, they'll say nobody was here. Hello. But do I have anybody who will admit that people, even the best of people, can fail you sometimes? They don't mean to, but, but, but every now and then, they, they, they just can't help you. Do I have anybody here? Some people depend on not who they know people, they depend on possessions, what they have. They seek to find security in stuff. That's why they like to brag about where they bought their dress and where they bought their suit. And I wish I had a witness here. They like to flash. Y'all, am I talking to anybody here? They, 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 they've got an addiction to bling, bling. Help me, somebody. Amen. Y'all don't know anybody like that. Don't look at them. Look at me. Amen. That, there's folk, I wish I had a witness here, who are, who are trying to find security in stuff. But I need at least one somebody who can testify that, that you can have all the stuff you want. But there are some things in life that stuff won't fix. Hello. You can have a silly posture Peter mattress and still can't sleep. You can have a refrigerator and a deep freezer full and don't have an appetite. You can drive a fine car but have nowhere to go. Hello. I wish I had a witness here. You can have money and your money can't help you. I, I'm just trying to find out if I got some company in here, amen, that, that, that some folk, amen, their faith is in stuff. And I know I'm right because there's some folk who've got billions of dollars, but yet some of those folk have taken their lives. <clears throat> People, possessions. But then sometimes people are dependent upon the place. The people in the text are the disciples. They were dependent upon each other. The, uh, the possessions was the boat. The boat, the boat, the boat. The boat was, was a proven, it was proven to be seaworthy. I, I need some Bible students here. It, it, it was, tell your neighbor, yes, it was, it was. It was seaworthy. It was, it, 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 they wouldn't have set out in a boat that had leaks in it. Come on, y'all. I mean, the boat, they had proven it. And, 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 but, but sometimes, uh, amen, possessions, amen, can become uh, an environment of danger. Read the text. The text says that the boat was now filled with water. But then the place, some people, uh, they find confidence in the place. 
that is faith in the familiar. They were familiar with the Sea of Galilee. Y'all go help me. <laughs> they were familiar with the Sea of Galilee. They knew the Sea of Galilee. But I don't tell nobody, but I need to know, is there anybody here who's ever had the unfamiliar, I mean the familiar to become unfamiliar? There's a, there's a song, it ain't in the hymn book, Pastor, but there's a song that talks about being a stranger in your house. Y'all act like y'all only sung out of hymns book. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Am I, am I talking to anybody here? Hey, amen. That, that the place that you are familiar with becomes unfamiliar. Y'all help me. Amen. Help me. My voice is giving me problems. I just need you to help me here. That sometimes the familiar place can become so unfamiliar you don't even know where you are. You have to step outside and check the address to see if it's still the place. Well, some people trust in people, some people trust in possessions, some people trust in the place, some people trust in their possessions, their professions, professions. Listen, listen. A significant number of the disciples were fishermen. Y'all ain't getting it. <laughs> They were fishermen, Pastor Thomas, so they had skills. Tell your neighbor they had skills. They, I mean, they, they, they knew how to handle a boat. I wish I had a witness here. They were not novice. They were not newcomers. They knew how to, y'all ain't talking to me here. They had skills. Yes, they did. They had refined skills. But do I have anybody here who can testify that there comes a time when certain situations happen in life that your skills don't matter? Hello. Oh, y'all, amen. Uh, I'm talking about what you know is not enough. I need one somebody here who's run across something in life that was beyond your knowledge bank. Amen. You couldn't figure it out. All of your plaques on the wall, all of your degrees, uh, all of your certifications, none of it helped you. Some trust in their perception, their, their understanding, what they think they know. Some folk know everything. Some folk think they understand everything. Sometimes... There are some people who have faith in what they see and the way they see it. Y'all ain't gonna help me. Y'all don't know anybody like that. They, they, the, the way they, the, what they see and the way they see it. Now, and, and I don't mean no harm, but, 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 but in some churches, you got some folk who always want to get up and say, well, the way I see it, listen, baby, that don't work here. Am I talking to anybody here? Amen. I must have stepped on somebody's feet. Amen. No, it ain't about the way you see it because there's some stuff you can't see tell your neighbor I've been trying to tell you that amen there is a way that seemeth right but the end thereof <clears throat> are the ways of destruction you see you can identify where your faith is by what you reach for when your life is under pressure. You can tell because, because the human tendency 
is to take hold when you're in trouble. Human tendency is to put down stuff you know you haven't had a lot of experience with and to grab the stuff that you're counting on. I wish I had somebody here. Well, let, let me let me let me rush to my next point. Um, but I want you to know that there's always a proving situation. Some of us don't testify, we test a lie. And it's not until life becomes difficult that it proves where your faith really is. Look at the text. The text says, and when they were in the boat, it says, and while they had, after they had set out, it says, and he fell asleep. Now, yeah, look at Jesus. I got problems. I got problems. From a human perspective, he fell asleep. He fell asleep. He was asleep. And while he was asleep, a storm arose. Y'all ain't hearing me. Now, this wasn't just any kind of storm. When you do a, a word study, it was a storm likened unto a hurricane. Anybody knows about a hurricane here? I grew up in Galveston, Texas. I know about hurricanes. Hurricanes have winds that come from every way. Y'all ain't talking to me here. They, 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 it'll be from the north one minute, then from the south, from the east, from the west. It just keeps going. You don't know where it's coming from. Do I have anybody been in a storm like that before? That everywhere you turn, you're being blown from side to side, up and down, side to side. It says, and the storm happened and the boat was now filled with water. I told you I grew up in Galveston and my dad uh, exposed me to fishing. He taught me how to fish from the bank. He taught me how to fish from the pier. He taught me how to wade fish. He taught me how to fish out of a boat. Now one of the things that he taught me about a boat is that the boat is supposed to set on the water and the water is not supposed to be in the boat. Do I have any boatmen here? Anybody? Amen. Amen. You, you, can, you can stay all day in a boat as long as the water is outside of the boat. Amen. But, 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 but something happens, amen, to your uh, attitude when the water that's supposed to be outside of the boat is in the boat. Y'all ain't talking to me here. And I don't mean just a little water. I ain't talking about a little water, amen. It, it was full, amen. Y'all hearing me? It was full. Anybody ever had your life, the stuff that was supposed to be on the outside has now invaded your space and now it is full. Y'all help me preach. It is full on the inside. Anybody know that's something to be concerned about? And Jesus, Jesus got up. They awakened Jesus. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, rebuked the wind and, and, and the waves and said, uh, the, and the King James says, peace be still. Yeah. But here's the thing about storms. Storms are unscheduled, unmanaging, and unsettling. Unscheduled. Now, if y'all like me, I don't care whether it's Texas or whether it's Michigan, one thing that is unsettling to me and that is beyond my ability to control and it's definitely not on my schedule are those orange barrels. The orange barrels that, that I, I didn't plan to go that route. I left in time to go my favorite route. Come on, talk to me here. And now they got a detour. Anybody happy about detours? Come on, talk to me here. And, but it's unscheduled. Anybody know you can't schedule a storm? 
it would be wonderful if you could schedule a storm. Say, I got a storm. It's supposed to be on April the 17th. It comes at 12 o'clock. And I've got it scheduled, so I'm prepared. But how many know you can't schedule storms? No, somebody over here, you act like you don't you don't know. You can't, no, you can't. Storms pop up out of anywhere. Nobody schedules a storm of disappointment. I'm talking about when stuff that you planned to happen, it didn't happen. Anybody ever had a storm of disappointment? Nobody can plan a storm of devastation when stuff that you didn't expect to happen, it happened and it knocked you off your feet, preached Pastor Johnson. I'm not a storm of disease when infection invades your body and now you've got a resident that's eating up your flesh. Nobody schedules that. No Nobody schedules a storm of death when a loved one that you thought would be here forever, you are now saying earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Nobody. And, and here's the thing. That proves where your faith is. God uses every storm in your life to give you evidence, not him, to give you evidence of your misplaced faith. Oh, you didn't like that. Let me... Proving question, the proving salvation, but proving situation, but the powerful salvation. Watch what happens. They're unsettled. Now, I just need those who will be honest with me to admit that you've had some unsettling times in your life. Maybe folk couldn't tell it by looking at you. But, but you had some stuff happening on the inside. I wish I had a witness here. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody behind me, they're helping me. That, that you, 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 you came, you ushered, you sung, you prayed. I wish I had a witness here. You taught, you preached, but that was something happening on the inside. You were unsettled on the inside. You were desperate. Anybody ever had a desperate situation in your life? Listen to them. They say, Master... Master, now listen, Master, wake up. We're about to all die. Wait, now you don't miss it. We're about to all die. No, you, 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 you missed it. They, they talking to Jesus and they are including him. We are about to all die. Y'all ain't talking to me here. I know you won't admit it because you think the pastor gonna take your holy card. But do I have anybody here that's ever had to talk to God like that? God, wait a minute. We're about to lose it all. There they are. Waking up Jesus. Waking him up. And Jesus, Jesus awakes, but he's not alarmed. Now don't miss that. <laughs> Jesus, he awakened, but he wasn't alarmed. No, y'all ain't... <laughs> He was awakened, but he wasn't alarmed. I'm going to say it again. You see, Jesus don't get alarmed. Hello. 
Y'all better say thank you. Amen. Amen. There is no word called emergency in the vocabulary of God. Amen. That he, we get alarmed. Y'all ain't talking to me here. God never receives information that puts him in a quandary of what's going to happen. We are alarmed. We just wake him up. Hello, somebody. Jesus rebukes the wind and rebukes the waves. Here's a little sidebar. Pastor Holloway, <clears throat> he says to the winds, stop provoking. And he says to the waves, stop reacting now y'all didn't get it water has no inherent movement in it something has to act upon the water to make it move there is always a provocation and a reaction and I am shouting glad that Jesus doesn't just speak to my reactions. He speaks to my provocation. He speaks to what causes my problem. And not, y'all ain't talking to me, and not just my problem. Anybody glad that he speaks to what is the provocation and what and not just the reaction? Y'all ain't hearing me. Some folk on your job are the provocation, but he speaks to you and says, you just be still. I got this. Amen. Anybody ever had him say peace? Peace be still. And the Bible says, <clears throat> the Bible says that, that instantly, instantly the wind shut up and the waves stood still. I don't mean to spend any time on it, but anybody got a testimony of how God came suddenly? <laughs> and the wind stopped blowing and everything settled down y'all ain't talking to me here don't be ashamed you ought to testify tonight that that when the, what was shaking your life rocking you back and forth the Lord spoke to it and the next thing you know you had a peace that surpasses all understanding you didn't even understand it Well, that takes me to this, my last point, this pondering reflection. Jesus rebukes the wind and the waves, but he asks a question which causes a pondering reflection. He says to them, why are you so fearful? Thank you, sis. Why are you Emphasis on you. So fearful. Why don't you trust me? <laughs> no, no. He said, why don't you? I wish I had a witness here. I'm talking to somebody here. Why don't you trust me? He says, why don't you trust my directions? My directions said, let us go to the other side. I didn't say, let us go out here and die. I said, let us go to the other side. Y'all ain't hearing me. He, I need somebody tonight. I'm speaking to you. God says, stop acting like you don't follow, you don't believe in my directions. Let us go to the other side. And 
then he says, why don't you trust my demeanor? Jesus was asleep. He was asleep yes. in the storm. Yeah, yeah. No, somebody back over there. He was asleep in the hinder part of the boat in the storm. He was asleep in the hinder part of the boat in the storm with the water in the boat. No, y'all ain't got it. He was in the same boat <clears throat> that was reeling and rocking, rising and falling, and that was full of water, and he was asleep. Y'all ain't hearing me. Let me tell you something. Now, if Jesus doesn't get excited about your situation, you get you a blanket and find you a corner and you go to sleep too. If, I wish I had a witness here. He was asleep. asleep y'all tell your neighbor he was asleep if Jesus is asleep you go to sleep do I have any mothers or fathers here that when you when your children you say listen I'm going to sleep you go take a nap hello and God y'all ain't talking to me here that no matter what's happening in your life he could sleep because even asleep he was sovereign even asleep he was in charge. Even asleep, he was aware. Y'all ain't talking to me. Even asleep, he doesn't bother about it because he knew the end of the story from the beginning of the story. Lord have mercy, brother. Lord have mercy. Well, I've kept you a little too long. He says. Why don't you trust my, Lord. my directions? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Why don't you trust my demeanor? Well, but why don't you trust all right. my past demonstrations? That's why. There is the emphatic mark of on the pronoun you. He says, you should know better. Yeah, you, 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 you've been with me through some stuff. Sometimes we allow our present storm to give us amnesia. My God. What you say? What you say? What you say? And we want to act uh -huh. brand new with God. Hello. Hello, Reverend. All right, Reverend. Can you help me say yes we do? Yes, we do. We want to act like we don't have a history with God. Yes, sir. But I just want to know if I have anybody here yes, sir. who's got a history with God. Yes, sir. Do I have anybody who can flip back through the pages of your life's journal and see God working on your behalf? Do I have a witness here? I need somebody in the house uh, who can say, God, uh, with God and I, we have a history. Anybody ever had somebody walk up to you and you know they know you and they want to act like they don't know you? 
Well, sometimes life can make you want to act like you don't know God. But can I get somebody to say, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Oh, yes, I do. Jesus says, you were there when I turned water into wine. You were there when I cooled Peter's mother-in-law of a fever. You were there when I made the lame man walk. Do I have a witness here? You were there when I fed 5,000. Do I have a witness here? Somebody ought to help me right now. You were there when the doctors gave up on you. You were there when the lawyer said, I can't help you. You were there when I made a way for you out of no way. Somebody ought to be shouting right here. Say, Lord, I remember how you brought me out. Lord, I remember how you picked me up and turned me around. Lord, I remember how you put food on my table when I didn't have a dime in my pocket. Lord, I remember that you've been good to me. I say good to me. Do I have anybody that can say, Lord, you've been good to me? Can I say, do I have anybody that can say, Lord, you've been good to me? Can you find you one somebody and say, neighbor, can I testify? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. He picked me up. Turn, turn me around, place my feet on solid ground. Won't he do it? I say, won't he do it? I'm talking about Jesus. And they say, who is this that can talk to the winds and the waves and they obey his will? Can you turn one more time and say, neighbor, neighbor, I know who it is. I know who it is. He came down through 40 and two generations. He came down, walked up 33 and a half years on this earth. But one Thursday evening, they arrested him, kept him up all night long. But say, neighbor, on Friday morning, I need some Baptist folk here. On Friday morning, they put a cross on his shoulder, led him up to a hill called Calvary. You know what happened out there. He died. He died. Yes, he died. Yes, he died. Yes, he died. But that ain't the end of the story. They buried him. He was dead Friday night, dead Saturday morning, dead Saturday night. Now put your best Baptist voice on and say early, early, early Sunday morning. He got up. Yes, he did. He got up. Yes, he did. Do I have a witness here? You ought to help me right now and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Yes, I will. I will trust in the Lord. I will. I trust him. I trust him. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in my lonely hours, those precious lonely hours, Jesus came and told me that I was his own. Can you say through it all? Through it all. Hey, yeah.
Doors of church are now open. There might be someone here tonight or online. You have no faith in Christ. You can trust him tonight. Will you come tonight? invitation has been extended and as always it's either yours to accept or to reject let us, say, let us thank God for the message thank God for the dynamic messenger amen Lord have mercy did not our hearts burn within us as Pastor Johnson challenged us with the word of God where is your faith Lord, have mercy. We have been blessed tonight through the preaching of the gospel through this man of God. We're asking even right now that the Lord would pour back into him what he's poured out to us on tonight in laboring in preaching the gospel. Oh, we've heard a word tonight. Amen. Amen from the preaching of the word of God. And I want to thank him for taking out his busy schedule to come here to the Pilgrim Red Church to share with us of the riches of God's word. We've been helped and we've been inspired and we've been encouraged to go forward a little bit further in the power of the Lord. I do want to thank Pastor Holloway for sharing on tonight. Pastor Russell, and also thank God uh, for my good friend, um, member of the 1995 class of Madison High School, Trey Thomas. <laughs> Amen. I thank God for my brother, my beloved, these years. And I thank God for him and all that he has meant to my life. And thank God for his ministry at the St. John Church on Gray taking them higher and higher in the Lord. Amen. 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 Certainly this is, has been our third night of revival. Uh, we will close out on uh, next Tuesday uh, with my good friend, uh, Pastor Moses Gordon III of the Fifth African Baptist Church there in New Orleans. He will be sharing uh, on next Tuesday. And so we thank God for this revival. Amen. Amen. If there's others that have not been out, please encourage them to come out to hear the word of God. Again, thank you, Pastor Johnson, for sharing with us tonight, asking that God will continue to bless you as you grow deeper in the word of God. I tell you, there's nothing like seeing a preacher preach. Amen. 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 Doesn't that do something to you? I, 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 I don't know what it does to you, but I know what it does to me. Uh, pouring out the word of God. And I tell you, boy, every preacher now is feel he want to take a text himself. Amen. <laughs> what we've heard on tonight. God bless you, Pastor Johnson. Last words and the blessing of the benediction by Pastor Johnson. Amen. Help me thank God for tonight. Amen. I often say that because we 
we don't make worship happen. No, no, we don't. Worship only happens under the auspices and the directions of the Holy Spirit. And we want to thank God for not letting us meet here tonight by ourselves. So help me thank God. Amen. I want to acknowledge another a dear friend of mine who's out there, Pastor Ray Nelson of the uh, New Bethel Baptist Church. Raise your hand, Pastor. Amen. I think that's Pastor Nelson. No, that's not Pastor Nelson. But my, my, my contacts have tried paying tricks on me. Um, Pastor Wilkins and to Pilgrim Rest, thank you for allowing me to come and to share during this revival season. Um, I am uh, honored and humbled to be here. Um, I thank you for receiving me and not looking at me like a calf looks at a brand new fence. As uh, a country saying, amen. Um, I, um, if you're ever in Detroit, know that you're welcomed at the Tabernacle Missionary Baptist Church of Detroit, Michigan. Uh, when you get there, make sure I know you're there. And, uh, cause I, I like greeting my cousins. Okay. And, um, Pastor Thomas, it was a blessing to worship. Uh, with you tonight and uh, great work at St. John and to my brother, uh, beloved pastor, friend of mine and brother, pastor of Cathedral of Faith in Galveston, doing a great work there. Uh, I'm blessed. Listen, when you face life's unexpected storm, and you find those unexpected storms unmanageable and unsettling, make sure that you settled the answer to the question, where is your faith? Sometimes you have to talk to yourself like that. You have to say, now wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to look yourself in the mirror and say, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where is your faith? A a amen. Come on now. Amen. And I'm saying this because you might not be in a storm tonight. I told you they're unexpected. They're unscheduled. Take this message. Put it in a seal of meal bag. Put it in the deep freeze of your mind. And when the unscheduled, unmanageable, unsettling storm comes, take it out. Gently defrost it in the microwave called prayer. And remind yourself that I know where my faith is. Hello, somebody. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. Praise God from whom all Thank you. 
We thank you afresh for this opportunity tonight, this experience of worship, this encounter with you, this enlightenment that comes from your word. We thank you for this church. Thank you for her rich history. Thank you for the, the pastor that you've placed here. Continue to lift him, strengthen him, continue to use him as you are using him to lead this church and to greater and greater heights for the kingdom. Now, Lord, help us to always have settled in our hearts where our faith is. Now we prepare to scatter from this place and we move without fear or trepidation because we know that we're in your hands. And we know that you are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy. To you, the only wise God, our Savior, through Jesus the Christ, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power henceforth now and forever. May we sing together. Amen. Thank you.